Unleash Success Podcast, where we break down the secrets of success to give you real tools and strategies that get real results. And now, here's your host, Corey Corpodian. Welcome back to Unleash Success. If you haven't subscribed to our newsletter yet, just go to unleashsuccess.com, enter your email so you can get all the tools and strategies sent directly to you each and every week. Today, we have the privilege of interviewing Jesse Elder. He is a action philosopher and time piercer, also an author and entrepreneur. He goes by the motto, you know, just a guy enjoying the work of making the world a better place for both him and his friends to inhabit. But really, his skill set lies in how to help people overcome their failures and develop the mindset of a leader. Jesse, thanks for coming on the show. Corey, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Really been looking forward to this. I am stoked because I really want to know about the time piercing. Time is something that is almost elusive to me. I feel like I have control. I feel like I don't have control. I really want to go into that. But before we do, I want to know what inspired you to get started with this life mission? Uh, Man, that's just out of the gate, dude. Uh, Solid question. (laughs) (laughs) I, I didn't set out to do this. You know, this wasn't like some big you know, 20 year vision or, or whatever. Um, I've, I've had, I've, I've been blessed to experience, um, some pain in my life, which I think is really, really useful because it, it pain gets, gets our attention like nothing else. Um, and, and I think that that's its purpose. The purpose of pain is to make sure that we're present. And, um, so I've, I've had some painful experiences and that helped me, forced me to pay attention to how I was thinking and, and, and what I was feeling and why was I feeling those things. And then I began to see the connection between my, what I was thinking, what I was feeling, uh, and, and the results that I was getting in my life. And that doesn't sound like rocket science. It's really not. But all of a sudden, I just began to, to become aware that this whole idea of the future five years, 10 years, 20 years, you know, that, that's like asking a baby who's just learning to talk what they're going to give a keynote address about at their, you know, commencement speech at, at uh, Harvard when they graduate. It's like the baby's like, man, I don't even know if I want to do that, first of all. Secondly, I have a vocabulary, literally the two-year-old, so I have no idea of knowing what I'm going to be able to do. For, the, for those of us who are trying to control the way that we feel, by controlling the future, uh, I've, I've just seen that that consistently can create uh, a lot of resistance for people, a lot of friction, a lot of unhealthy comparisons, and, um, and, and that is a source of a lot of failure. So in my own life, this whole mission really is not a mission. I'm, I'm literally just here to enjoy life as much as possible. And I've observed that the more that I allow myself to enjoy my life and the more that I trust myself to make those choices that, uh, that lead to more joy and, and fulfillment and engagement and, and, uh, and growth, et cetera, the, the better my influence and impact seems to be. But I never set out to make an impact. Um, it seems that influence and impact is a natural byproduct of living a self-authorized life. Absolutely. You know, lead yourself first and, you know, then other lead others. Right. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, you know, I, I agree with you, you know, pain is, uh, an incredibly powerful motivator, um, kind of can snap you out of things. You know, you always hear about stories and, and mine's kind of similar too, where it's just, I had some extremely painful experiences and out of that pain, I was forced to find some sort of solution. It was almost out of desperation to just change my life for the better. And it's, you know, everybody says you hit rock bottom and, you know, it's only going up from there. And sometimes it takes to you too. It's not always, I mean, for me, like I was successful on paper, but so unfulfilled with life and just doing what I thought I should be doing instead of what I wanted to be doing. Uh, One of the inspirations for this podcast was that just to be doing what I want to be doing. This is my passion. I I love learning other people's tools for success. And it was driven out of pain because, you know, I wanted, I wanted to learn and and I wanted to share that with people. And I'm curious for you, you said you had some painful experiences. 
And in, I don't know if these were failures or mistakes that you made. I wonder if you want to share something that you learned, maybe a lesson from them. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll just tell you, man, um, you know, without, without, uh, <laughs> or at the risk of getting all, you know, woo woo and, and stuff. Um, I, I went through significant periods of my life where just being alive was painful. Like I, I literally felt like I'd been dropped off in the wrong planet. I was like, man, this is like bullshit. I, I don't want to be here. This, this place doesn't make any sense to me. I feel alone. I feel homesick even when I'm at home, you know, surrounded by my parents and my brothers, my sister. And I, I just have felt lonely, deep loneliness throughout significant stretches of time. And so, you know, from that sense, yeah, first world problems, right? You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know I, I had loving parents. Uh, I, I was sort of gifted this self-directed childhood, you know, where I never went to school. I've never taken a test. I've never sat behind a desk. I've never gotten a grade. What do you mean? You were homeschooled or they, they didn't? I guess technically that's the term for it. It was, it was more like, um, do your chores in the morning and I'll, and we'll see you at dinner. Wow. Okay. That's an interesting upbringing. Yeah. And, and it was, I'm, I'm really appreciative of that because it's, it, um, you know, my, my parents, we've had many conversations about it, but they, they, to this day, they, they both say, we just tried to stay out of your way. Uh, you look like you knew what you were doing and we figured we'd, you know, just make sure you were safe and that roof over your head and, and let you live your own life. And so you've got this supportive family, but yet you said you feel or you felt so alone. Yeah, constantly. What was going on? Uh, it was it was just it was as if you're you're. Uh, you know, I I just observed so much fascination and beauty and curiosity in the world, um, and I and I would spend hours and hours and hours by myself, just just looking at bugs in the background or or you know, or in the backyard or taking the bus to go to the library and just load up with books and then bring them home and spend the rest of the day reading. And so I, my mind was very active. Uh, but that, that also brought us a sort of isolation. You know, I felt like nobody else saw the world the way that I wanted, that I saw it. And I saw things in people that were so fascinating for me. And, and I got the sense that they didn't see it in themselves. And so it was kind of like, you know, you can play a musical instrument, crank it up to to uh, <laughs> to eleven, and everybody else's dial only goes to three. And it was like, ah, it's just so frustrating. You know, there's so much more life to be lived, and I just didn't feel like like I connected with anybody. And so that you know, throughout my teens, created a, a, a real feeling of isolation, uh, a lot of loneliness, incredible shyness, and anxiety. You know, around girls, and and I really found refuge in martial arts because martial arts was where I connected with myself and there was other people and that led to me um, getting my black belt and then teaching and sort of teaching became the way that I, that I felt the least pain when I would train and, and study and compete and learn from, from experience and then share that experience with students in the class. That was the, the thing that made me feel most at home. Super interesting. Just uh, also to uh, another friend of mine, Sam Wiegert, who was actually episode one of Unleash Success. Yeah, um, I know Sam. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God. That, I'm not surprised. Uh, amazing guy. And uh, it kind of like similar, he never felt like he belonged and, and he found martial arts and, you know, he was just like, uh, use that to kind of hone in and then um, started his first business at like 15 years old. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, Sam's an incredible story. guy, man. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's really funny. Wow, we're making tons of connections between Alex and Sam. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, and so when when you were going through this, though, it a lot of people feel like that. A lot of people feel like they don't belong. I know, God, I've been there. Yeah. And it's funny, you, you can even be surrounded by friends or family. Oh, totally. And so I, I think it's, uh, to me, it, it has to do with kind of what's going on inside our own head. And I know for, for me, it was always, um, you know, practicing gratitude and kind of appreciating what I have. But I'm wondering for you, like, how did you get out of that mindset where you felt alone and now you feel so connected with life and, and the world? Yes. Yes. This is, this is a very, very important question, Corey. The, the, the reason why we, we think the thoughts that we think and, and, consequently feel the feelings that we have is because of our dominant practices. And I didn't recognize this for, for a long time, but when I did, I began to test it aggressively. And 
I found that because we do have control over the thoughts that we think, even though we might not feel that way, you know, a thought pops in or a feeling pops in and you're just like, ugh, didn't feel like you chose that. But you can always choose what to do next. You can always choose what to do right now. And I began to become aware of that that ability, that ability to choose. And I began to realize that I was actually practicing depression. I was actually practicing isolation. I was practicing uh, loneliness. I was practicing disconnection. And as soon as, I mean, that really changed everything. Once I recognized that it was something that I was practicing, although I'd been doing it unconsciously, it didn't mean it wasn't happening. And so I thought, well, if, if, if it's true that I've been practicing these, these crappy feelings by thinking thoughts that don't feel good, what would happen if the next time I started to feel bad, I decided willfully to practice a new thought, to practice something different? And, uh, and so I did. So I started to, feel, you know, one day I started feeling really depressed and I had the presence of mind to recognize that, oh, here I go again, practicing this thing that I've gotten really good at. And uh, let me practice something else. So I, I made myself get up and go out for a walk and I still felt like, horrible. I still felt, you know, like existential angst and all this, but I noticed that it was, I was feeling it while I was walking and that was kind of new, kind of interesting. And then just the going for the walk distracted me a little bit because there were so many other things competing for my attention, the sunshine and the, and the wind and the traffic going by. And I began to feel myself peel away from that old trajectory, that very familiar groove of you know feeling depressed and like I don't even want to be on the planet what's the point and I began to feel some new thoughts coming in and I began to feel relief and then I recognized and, and this is just when it hit me I recognized that I created that I made that shift happen by choosing to think a different thought and if and I thought if I can experience even just one degree of relief from that those painful feelings seems to me that's the hardest part is getting out of the groove. And if I can make that one degree change, I wonder if I can do it again. So I thought, all right, well, let me, let me trend my thoughts a little bit different. And I literally, dude, I literally thought myself into a state of grace, a state of absolute connected joy and bliss. I mean, tears were running down my face. I felt my heart opening. I felt my body just releasing. and. I could still think about the depression, like I could still, you know, remember because it was only like you know, eight minutes earlier that I'd been feeling like I don't even want to be on the planet anymore. But I, I just experienced this incredible malleability, this this flexibility of my own reality, and uh, it, man, that changed everything. Jesse, I feel like you are a brother from another mother. I like we, <laughs> yeah, we, man. we have lived uh, very different lifestyles and upbringings, but kind of came to some similar um, conclusions about life. And I had this, I had kind of the same realization uh, yeah. after being depressed for eight years. Uh, you know, it was like uh, going into personal development, understanding that what I think um, one second doesn't have to be what I think all day. Um, and that we have the ability to choose. And it had the same profound effect on my mindset, but I love what you said because so many people are like, I chose to be happy, but I still felt like shit. And yeah. That's the truth though. It's because you've been practicing something. I practiced depression for years. I was really good at it. Yes. And, and do people practice happiness? And studies will show, you know, just smiling for 20 minutes a day for a month. <laughs> can right? alleviate depression. It's like, wh know. what do you mean? Just because we're practicing it and our bodies are engaged with our minds. So by physically smiling, that creates our reality and thoughts do create reality. I know that seems so sort of, uh, you know, metaphysical and, and kind of out there, but, but there's no, there's no evidence to the contrary. There's not a scrap of evidence to prove otherwise. And, and the truth is talking to guys like you and also even in my own life, realizing the simple fact that everything we wanted to accomplish started as a single thought. And now this is the reality that we live in. Yes. Love it, man.
talking about thoughts and and our goals and and developing kind of the mindset for being an influential leader uh, that you've become and how you help people. What are some of the daily practices um, that you use to develop that mindset? Yeah, um, a couple of concepts that we'll, that we'll dive into. One is um, an, a, an aggressive, um, very focused, relentless practice of holistic hedonism. You know, the, the term hedonism brings up certain you know thoughts and beliefs and images, and you know somebody who's just you know completely self-absorbed and only cares about pleasure uh, uh, at all cost. And there's a, there's a, a, a subtle distinction, but it's very, very important um, between things that feel good uh, and, and things that make you feel good about yourself. And so, you know, going and, and you know, snorting six lines of Coke and then, uh, you know, chasing it with, you know, a half a bottle of Jack Daniels and then going to, you know, do some writing and all of that. Well, most of us would listen to that and think that's horrible. You're destroying yourself. And I'm certainly not advocating. I've actually never done Coke in my life, but for an individual who's an artist, who's chosen that path and who deals with their demons or whatever their life is in that way, you'll find that they actually accept that that's just part of who they are and just live that life. Now I'm not suggesting that that's sustainable for somebody who cares about their body, for example. Yeah, but holistic hedonism is the sustainable practices of things that make not only make you feel good, but that make you feel good about yourself. And so, in in my personal life, that does not include cocaine. I've never (laughs) even touched it. You know, I I I, it just doesn't interest me. Um, But it does include things like um, you know when it comes to time. I immediately assign a numerical value to any activity that comes across my radar. And it's not from zero to 10, it's one or zero. It's binary. It is yes or no, absolutely yes or absolutely no. And I stopped judging things according to how much money I'm going to make or you know how connected I'm going to be, blah, blah, blah. I just started assigning values to things based on does it give me energy or does it suck energy from me? And so I stopped practicing perseverance and discipline um, years ago. I just found them to be completely irrelevant to living a life of, of uh, fully functioning creativity. And so this practice of holistic hedonism, doing things that not only feel good, but make one feel good about themselves, uh, this does require a, a, a tremendous amount of self-authorization seeking approval from no one, fearing disapproval from no one, requiring permission from no one, and trusting oneself 100%. And if somebody can arrive at that place where they can look at the mirror and say, I trust myself 100%, I require zero permission from another human being to express my desires, to pursue my inspirations, to follow my intuition. That's it's that's the journey. And if somebody can arrive at that spot, and it doesn't take long, but if they can arrive at that place where they are truly operating as a self-authorized individual, well, then obligation goes out the door. You never do anything you feel you have to do again. And this is where where time uh, doesn't need to be managed anymore because all of your time is your own. And there's nothing on the calendar uh, that, that, that you are not looking forward to. And, and in fact, in, in my case, uh, I'm, I'm really blessed to have an amazing team who tells me where to be and what to do. And, and, uh, and the only thing that ends up on my calendar are things that I absolutely look forward to, like this conversation. There, there's, there is nothing on my schedule, but just this interview. And, and I love my ideal calendar is a blank calendar look at freshly fallen snow just virgin territory waiting to be explored that's awesome and the one to zero concept of yes i absolutely want to do this or no i don't want to do this bringing energy to me or sucking energy away from me uh that that's life-changing 
I, it can be I, if it's if it's applied. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Um, I I love it though. I you know I I'm a big guy to, of saying like I want to go all in. You know I, I like the intensity, um, and I don't want to half ass stuff. But I've never uh, verbalized it like that, and that's really powerful. Uh, it really is a, a life without compromise, and that requires knowing oneself. That requires knowing your thoughts and your emotions and, and, and knowing what we actually want versus what are inherited goals. You know, what, what are the things that we're supposed to want according to society or other people? Well, is that what you really want or is that what you were taught to want? So you got to, you got to tease those apart. But once, once that happens, then you're, you're just following this inner GPS all of the time. Okay. So this concept, um, your philosophy and to kind of summarize it, it really comes down to, you know, letting go of what others think and being a hundred percent confident in yourself. And, and how do you let go of everybody else's emotions and stay so confident in yourself? Um, well, that's a, that's a good question, Corey. I, I believe, um, in, in my, in my own example or in my own life, I've arrived at this, this, uh, place, this, this channel of reality. Um, through practice and, and really just through logic, I am not responsible for anybody else's experience. I'm, I'm not the creator of anyone else's feelings. I am not the director of their, uh, you know, of their perception. And I've, I've come to 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 believe through practice and, and through observation that the greatest gift any of us can give. Uh, is the gift of our own joy and our own well-being. And uh, I, I, very similar to you, when I was speaking and teaching, especially you know teaching you know thousands of martial arts classes, I was so dialed into what the students are feeling. You know, what's the energy of the room, and you know, okay, what are we going to do next to keep that energy there? And over time, I recognized that um, I was increasingly stressed out because I I had taken on the burden of other people's experience. Uh, and I realized I just wasn't having fun. And so when I began speaking a, a couple of years ago, uh, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to use PowerPoints. I'm not going to prepare a presentation. Uh, I'm going to ask some questions, find out what people are there for. I'm going to ask some deeper questions, see if there's something that they're really there for and that maybe they're not aware of. And then I'm just going to open it up, let it flow, get my you know conscious mind a little bit out of the out of the way, stop overthinking, and I'm just going to I'm just going to riff. And I'm just going to do this sort of improv, um, real time, rapidly calibrating flow of concepts and strategies and maybe a few tactics. And I'm just going to riff this thing and do this live action philosophy performance, which is actually co created by the intention and the, the questions and the curiosity of the audience. But I don't care. Um, it's, it's not my job to care what their experience is because they're having their own experience. And I found, and this is, this is the, the, the sort of surrender part of it, that if I focus 100% on being authentically, powerfully, clearly, fully myself, I've yet to see anything that lights up another human being as much as that. Because when, when we're operating in that space of authenticity and power and clarity and just being fully ourselves without apology, then and also not trying to polarize people. You know, I'm not trying to make somebody, you know, upset or whatever just so I can, you know, get social media rankings and all that other bullshit. I'm just being myself. And I know that some people will like that, some people won't. And that's cool. It's a big world. But I've observed that when people are around someone who's in that zone, and who lives in that zone, what people are actually seeing is a reflection. They're, they're sort of looking in the mirror and they're seeing themselves. So for you when, you, when you're doing an interview and you get in the zone and afterwards your guest is like, wow, man, that was really great. Man, I, I, I love your show, Corey. I really love you, man. That feels awesome. But there's a deeper, um, there's something deeper going on. When somebody says, man, I really, I really love you. I really love... What, whatever. I really love your work. I, I, I love your show. I love you. Translation. I love the way I feel about myself when I'm with you. I like me more because you remind me of who I actually am. 
and I, and my one definition of of love is is uh is a sort of <laughs> cheesy acronym but it is letting others voluntarily evolve and I, and I think the greatest compliment anybody can get is if somebody says to them man when i'm around you i feel like i can i can just be myself that's so cool that is uh very interesting and it makes a ton of sense when people say that and you're absolutely right you know um the ability to let go or reconnect with who you really are who you want to be uh when you're with somebody and we all have friends like that right where yeah somebody you know they're your best friend and every time you're with them you're just having the best time ever and you're laughing yeah. and you're enjoying life and you're like yeah we just you know we bring that energy out of each other and then there's other people who kind of suck the energy out of life and you know it's like obviously those people you you let go of and the other people you want to spend more time with but that is so powerful that's really cool I feel like when people are doing something that they love and they're in flow state and they've, they wrote a book about it. Uh, stealing fire was the name of the book. Just an incredible, uh, yeah, J- Jamie's, Jamie's a good friend of mine. No way. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. He actually, he actually wrote, uh, portions of that book at my home in Austin. <laughs> oh my God. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Jamie's a good guy. Steven too. Steven and I have, have, uh, had many, many wonderful conversations. And that, that flow state is something that, when people get into and when people are around it too, it's an, it's an attraction. Um, and it's one of those things that I uh, like strive to be in when I'm, you know, just living life. And I like what you said there too, just it's a natural state of living and it should be, you know, but unfortunately sometimes we get in, in the way of ourselves. We choose, we choose to opt out of that state. Right. So what are some common mistakes that people make when like, like choosing to opt out of that state? Like how can we revert back and And, you know, I, one thing I do is I forgive myself when I make a mistake, uh, much faster yep. than I used to, which is yeah. helpful. Yeah. You're in the, you're in the top percentile if you can do that. Yeah. And I'm not perfect every time. Sometimes I, you know, hold it in, but I try to, because it makes life easier and it, you can move on faster. So what are some ways that you're able to to move on if you know if you make a mistake or if you fail? Well, the the the, the um, this is very very important because the the only difference between uh, well, let's take money for example. The only difference between the the listener right now who is you know let's say they're they're earning X amount and they desire to earn more. Well, there is a version of them that is actually earning more, and the only difference is the number of mistakes that that version of them has made. And so it's just like learning a, 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 you know, a kick or a technique in martial arts. Of course, you don't know the technique. You're not born knowing the technique, but the technique is easily learnable. You probably have to make uh, anywhere from a hundred to, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, two or 3000 mistakes in order to achieve a functional mastery of that technique. So in terms of money, Money is a skill. The beliefs around money is a skill. The tactics around money is a skill. And so those skills can be learned by anyone. And um, so, so in terms of making mistakes, it, it is uh, eliminating any negative emotion. Uh, I, personally, I do not suffer. I, I never experience suffering. Suffering is the emotion of, of resistance, wishing that you were somewhere else or wishing that something wasn't happening or, or, or you know, wishing that something else was happening. That's suffering. Um, and I don't suffer. That being said, there are probably hundreds of times every day where I have a, an image in my mind or, or, a, or a, a sound in my ear, like I'm learning to play guitar right now, and I have a sound in my ear of how I want the note to be. And I, I contort my fingers into this, this awkward feeling clawed clutching of the neck of the guitar that I hope is the right chord. And then I take the pick and I strum the strings. And what comes out of the guitar is remarkably different than the sound that's in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Do I label that experience with the word mistake? 
do, do I brand that experience and, and sear into my mind that that was a failure? No, no, it's just an experience. And so my only job in learning is to keep a steady, gentle, uh, sort of soft, appreciative focus on how I like things to be. How would I like it to be? How do I want it to sound? How do I want the website to look? How do I want my speech to be? How would I like the private client day to roll out? And I have an image in my mind of what that's like. And then I just move and I take action. I do things constantly calibrating towards the direction of the image and the and experience that I have in my mind. But there's no suffering anywhere in that. And as a result, learning takes place incredibly fast when there is no judgment. And so you said something really, really valuable that you forgive yourself for, for screwing up. And, and that's very powerful. If somebody can forgive themselves, uh, then that's great. I would suggest, uh, just based on my observations, that we can uh, take that philosophy and, and, and upgrade it. There's, a, there's another level where forgiveness becomes irrelevant because forgiveness is the release of judgment. Mm. But, but what if there's no judgment in the first place? Yes. Then that means moving through these experiences, whether it's playing guitar or, you know, building a, a you know, million dollar business or, um, you know, crafting and, and constructing a mind blowing love life. These are all experiences that are easily within reach of anybody listening to this podcast. And so releasing judgment practicing a 100%, uh, I would even say radical self-acceptance, uh, appreciating yourself, even loving yourself as the growth-oriented being that you actually are, um, it, it's just not, I'll speak personally, it's not in anybody else's power to make me feel bad about myself. Only I can do that. And I stopped choosing to do that a long time ago because I didn't like the way it felt and I found it ridiculously counterproductive. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's almost like by thinking about these negative thoughts, it, it prevents us from taking action towards our goals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, you nailed it. And, 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 if, and then if we're sitting there you know, in, the, in the ivory tower of our private thoughts, of course, everything could be perfect. But then you're missing out. It's like thinking about the meal instead of getting out there and actually eating it. Um, and, and so, you know, a lot of people are, are thinking about their goals and thinking about their dreams and, da, 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 and just thinking and, they, and they're not getting out in the arena. And, uh, you know, they might create some things just sort of by accident, but they're missing out on the full experience. And as, as far as I'm concerned, that sort of armchair manifester you know, the person who's just kind of sitting back, hanging back, thinking about what they'd like to experience. Now, that's like having sex with all your clothes on. I mean, sure, it's possible, but <laughs> why? It right. makes no sense at all. Um, Jesse, I want to shift gears a little bit. Uh, and this yeah. is really because personally, uh, I'm intrigued by the the name um, Time Piercer. And you know, I kind of hear a little bit of it with the one zero uh, type of mentality where you either go all in or you don't. And I want to know, you know, how do you manage your time and what does time piercer mean to you? Yeah, two, two great questions. I'll answer the second one first uh, and then we'll, and then we'll, we'll uh, close the loop with the second, second question. How do I manage time? Um, the, the, the time piercing concept is something that's unfolded um, starting as a thought exercise and uh, full disclosure, disclaimer. Um, I never claim to teach the truth, speak the truth. Um, I'm, I'm not claiming to know the truth. I sure as hell don't claim to live the truth. And the reason for that is I stopped asking what's true a long time ago. Instead, I started asking myself, what's useful? And that has allowed a, a tremendous amount of freedom mentally, emotionally, psychically, energetically, physically, financially, uh, socially, uh, creatively. I experience an increasing amount of freedom from that one question. Not, is it true, but is it useful? And so uh, I did a video uh, about time. Uh, time is an illusion. 
and that video went crazy. It got like 11 million views and, and people um, were very divided. You know, some people saw it. They were like, this is bullshit. And other people were like, oh my God, I've always thought this and this is amazing. Guess what? They're both right. From their perspective, they're both correct. And so everything I'm about to say in the next couple of minutes, um, I'm not asking anybody to believe this. Um, I found it to be the most useful uh, philosophy for achievement for happiness, for creating presence, deep presence uh, in, in life, and uh, in, a, in a state of, of genuine, sustained, expanding fulfillment and, and happiness. So, But that's me. Somebody else might hear this and say, this guy is whacked. This is bullshit. I don't care how many Facebook fans he's got. This, is, this, is, this guy's an idiot totally cool. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with whatever somebody decides. So with all that being said, this uh, concept of time that we are so um, addicted to, this concept of, of uh, past, present, and future, is really just a concept. It's just an idea. In fact, it's an idea that we have to be taught. Children have no concept of time until they are taught. Uh, the natural world that has zero concept of time in the sense of I have to be somewhere at a certain time. Time piercing is blurring the lines or, or perhaps removing the barriers altogether between what we would call the past and the present and the future. So as an example, if you think about the past, you can narrowed the past down to a specific moment, a specific memory. And you can think about uh, what you were eating for lunch last Thursday, or you can think about uh, a walk that you were on or a workout that you were doing last week. And if you really spend a couple of seconds on it in this moment, you can think about that place, that time. You can get those images and access it. And according to conventional thinking, that is over. That, that experience is finished. It's gone forever. It lives on only in your memories. And the same thing is true with the future. The future is this someday occurrence, which eventually will get here. But right now it's not here, but, but we're, we're on our way to it. This is a very popular, uh, in fact, almost universal belief. The, the flaw that I see in that is that we are placing ourselves um, at the, the pinnacle of consciousness, the pinnacle of reality. We're, we're choosing to see ourselves as the, uh, the only game in town. And so this awareness of reality, what you see, what you hear, including my words right now, the chair that you might be sitting in, all of that is real because we can verify it with our senses. And everything else is unreal. Everything else is, is not real. But that's assuming that this uh, portal into reality, our eyes, our ears, our, our uh, bodies, that's assuming that, that this apparatus that we have of physical perception is the only way to perceive reality. And if we can't sense it with th that apparatus, then it doesn't exist. I have a different. Um, experience a different understanding and so it's very much like playing virtual reality if anybody's ever done virtual reality experience you know that you're you have the visor the goggles on and you're in this fantastic world and swinging through vines or wingsuiting or you know fighting zombies or something and that's your attention like your attention is is, is immersed in this reality and yet in the back of your mind you have an awareness that you're actually in a living room Hmm. But that living room is not part of your reality because you're fighting zombies. But then you take the VR goggles off and then you look around and you're out of that reality and you're back in the, the, uh, the living room. So my theory, my, my practice is that if we were to relax our, our death grip on this reality a little bit and play a little bit more with the concept that what if that version of you that's doing the workout, what if, what if that version is actually doing that workout right now? Because what if there's more than one version of, of you? What if your 
consciousness, this, this energy that you call you, is actually capable of playing more than one game at once. If that were to be true, or at least worthy of exploration, then that version of you that's doing the workout is doing so right now. It's not over. It's not in the past. That's just how it feels from this limited perspective of reality right now. But that version of you is still doing that workout. And in fact, that version of you could very well be imagining forward into the future and thinking about right now, listening to this podcast, doing this interview. So what is the difference between memory and imagination? They're both a sort of connection to something that seems like it's not real. But what if it is? What if your soul, your spirit, your, your consciousness actually has multiple apps running all at once? Not to diminish or, or to demean the life of a human being into being compared to an app. But, but what if? What if what if this particular collection of biological hardware that we call a body and metaphysical software that we call thoughts and beliefs, what if those are actually being run? many, 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 many applications all at once by this sort of infinite, beautiful consciousness so that it can experience many, many different realities. All right, Jesse, and, what a trip. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to just, you know, focus, intensely listen and, and, and roll with you. And, and while I was listening, I'm going into my own mind. I'm thinking about the, the workout I did last week. I'm thinking about the workout I did last week and envisioning doing a podcast next week. And I'm like, Oh, I'm in this body, in this reality. And, yeah. and I guarantee like a bunch of people are listening going, what the fuck is this guy talking about? But I, there's a couple questions that I have kind of pertaining to this and, Great. and, Great. and I, in a way I understand what you're talking about time. Uh, it, it trips me out like nothing else. Um, in a lot of different ways, uh, I'm fascinated with gravity and how that affects time. Um, yep. for anybody wondering what I'm talking about, just go watch the movie interstellar and, uh, yep. you'll see that. But, and I basically, cause I read a book from Einstein who he wrote it like 1917 or 1911, something like that, like over a hundred years ago. And I was studying physics and I was like, this stuff blows my mind, but the perception of our ability, right? So to, to go back into a memory, and Jason Silva is one guy who kind of talks about this, how with social media and photos, we're able to live the memory again. I mean, that's, you know, yes. talking around a dinner table with family, how we're talking about an old memory, an old experience, and we're laughing. We are reliving that experience emotionally and enjoying that memory again as if it was happening now. And so when you talk about that, it, are we living in that? memory or is that are we envisioning the future and and visualizing it and i also you know talking about how we create our reality out of thoughts i too believe that you know there could be different pathways in my future and i visualize a couple different ones but my actions now create the new reality of my future correct so that probably just confused people even more, but <laughs> no, I think it's just, it's the exact same thing. Your actions now, um, you're basically, it's like we're, we're, we have momentum right. and, um, and so the momentum of thought, the momentum of belief, the momentum of expectation is, uh, sort of em em emitting this, this frequency, which is uh, like a, like a beam coming out of a projector onto the screen and then our eyes see what's on the screen and then we put it in our brain and we're watching the movie. Um, but we are both, we are, are simultaneously the projector of reality and the receiver of reality. All the universe is, is a, a screen that's bouncing back to us, our dominant thoughts and beliefs and expectations. And so as we make choices, what to think, what to feel, what to do, we're continually shifting our, our trajectory. And, and, and it's, it's less, less useful to think about it as a physical trajectory. It's more, um, more accurate to think about it like tuning a, a radio station or, or you know, changing a song on Spotify. That's a great analogy, actually, because you know, f for everybody going, what is going on? But I guarantee if you were to shift what you focus on 
in the day. If you say you're gonna wake up and have the best day of your life, you're gonna be happy, you're gonna enjoy it, you're gonna find ways to make that a reality. Um, and I've done that all the time. Absolutely. And and in that from that perspective, time is actually the least important factor. Huh. Um, you know, the, the, I mean, I've, I've done this with clients, uh, repeatedly. I shouldn't say I've done it with clients. It's not like I'm a fucking guru, but the, the, <laughs> I've seen this happen for clients repeatedly where they will enter into a private day. We'll have dinner the night before and just kind of sync up and, and have a great time basically. And then the next day, the whole day is really just dedicated to feeling into this, this different future, sometimes borrowing from the past, but mostly blur, blurring the lines between past and future. and invariably they will literally start to think the thoughts that that version of them in the so-called future, which I don't believe is in the future. I think it's happening right now elsewhere in some sort of, you know, something we don't really understand, but it's accessible. Just like all the songs that you could ever hope to listen to, they're all available. You might not have them on your phone, but you just have to search for them, type it in, the song starts playing. So if you'd like to play the song called uh, let's, let's call it, uh, abundant wealth, um, having, having flow of money coming in and out of your life in this fantastically comfortable rhythm, just like breathing. And as you improve, improve your money, uh, conditioning, your money, cardiovascular, your money, VO2 max, you actually can breathe in more money and breathe out more money. And so let's call that a channel. Let's say you want to play the song of, uh, of limitless wealth. The only reason people don't experience that is the thoughts that are, that are blocking it. Oh, I'd like to make this million dollar a year business or whatever. Oh, but it's going to be hard. Okay. Well, you just, you basically just, just canceled out <laughs> your order. And what you don't want is you, you don't want the money. You want the feeling and the lifestyle and the, and the beliefs and the contribution that you think that money will create. So focus on that. And I've watched people do this repeatedly and, and usually by, 2 p.m. they're done uh, and they've got the creation to show it. They've, they've already made the, the connections. They've already, in some cases, made a sale. They've already created a reality that's in alignment with this new frequency. And they're just laughing. They're like, I can't believe it's this easy. I'm like, well, this is what happens when you don't have contradictory thoughts. This is what happens when you operate in a vacuum of resistance. All of your dreams become self-evident. And all of the, uh, the opposition to those dreams, all the reasons why you thought it would take a long time, or all the reasons why you thought it would be hard, those reasons become invisible because you're just not feeding them with your attention. So, Jesse, that, that actually goes into the, the my, kind of the big question is, and, and I think you answered it right there, but how does this belief about time empower you to accomplish your goals in life? Yeah, very, very, uh, very good question. Um, it, it really, because reality is continually reflecting back our dominant expectations, I found time piercing to be uh, the most powerful way of creating very strong expectations. You know, it's, it's hard to believe in something that you don't know is real. It's hard to believe that, that it, things will work out when you're in the middle of, of the, the shit. You know, it's hard to think that, that you're going to be wealthy when you're struggling to pay your bills. So the whole time piercing concept actually suspends disbelief by tapping into that vision, that version of you that is actually operating freely and, and confidently and with certainty. And by using this amazingly unique human skill of imagination, we can, in, in my experience, pierce time tap into that reality, that future, using this, this amazing thing of imagination, and we can actually craft or source or perhaps just tap into or maybe even receive information about that version of you that is operating the way that you actually like to operate. And by going there consistently and shoring up and seeing and, and feeling and thinking and, and using this imagination to feel that version of you, well, when are you feeling it? You're feeling it now. You're thinking those thoughts now. And those frequencies, those thoughts, those feelings, those beliefs, those expectations, which seem borrowed through observation, they actually become activated right now. And since now is the only real thing, then using this time-piercing exercise, this time-piercing um, experience as a way 
to sort of scaffold yourself into this new vibration, this new feeling. Um, that is the genesis of creation. And then by strengthening that and going there repeatedly, not to get things done, but doing it because it feels good to do, to daydream a little bit, all of a sudden the resistance melts away. The, the I don't know how I'm going to do it. That just goes away because you, you surrender the, the need for that, which is in itself a form of resistance. And you just play with the idea like a child plays with a favorite toy. Jesse, this was uh, that was incredible. I, I think I'm going to have to re-listen to this a few times to fully grasp this concept, but I think I got it. And I, I think it just kind of mirrors a few things that I also do in my own life with visualization, yeah. you know, visualizing the goals, creating the reality in my head first. And I, yeah. it's so similar and it's just a different way to say it. Um, but it, where I visualize my reality in such detail, in such clarity. And then to me, I think it's like a like a GPS system, kind of like what you said, inner GPS. I'm following my my own path and I'm just walking the path now. I'm just taking the action to create that reality. Yep. Love it. Love it. Be- because, dude, you, you just you just hit something really important. Action is not how you make things happen. It just isn't. Action doesn't make anything happen. Action is how we experience what's already in motion. Being in the in the front car at the roller coaster and waving your hands up in the air as you're hurtling down the hill, the act of waving your hand in the air and screaming your head off is not what's propelling the roller coaster. (laughs) Right. It's the enjoyment or or fear, whatever I guess somebody's experiences. You know, the act of chewing the meal eating and savoring the, the flavors. That's not what made the meal. That's how you enjoy what's already been created. Making the sales call, having a dialogue with someone and, and, and inquiring into their reality and what do they want to experience and you know what's stopping them from doing it and you know what would it look like if that wasn't an issue and having a beautiful conversation with somebody that then results and some new awarenesses and results in some, some illumination of blind spots they weren't aware of and the immediacy of how quickly they can get into this new reality with whatever solution you're providing. That's a joyful, fun conversation that actually is beneficial for both people. The greatest expense in business is the money that somebody could be making and they're not. So having them make a new choice and get a new tool, get a new solution, get a coach, get a mentor, whatever it is, is actually saving them a ridiculous amount of money that they're missing out on. And then the provider, coach, consultant, advisor, whoever, receives a sale, which is very fair. Where's the resistance in that? (laughs) I mean, it's a whole, you know, that that reality is a very joyful reality to to be in. But it's all the result of what's been pre-paved, what's been pre-rendered through our imagination and our expectation. Yes. So. Even though, you know, I, I get what you're saying. The action is the enjoyment of what we've already done and visualized and, and maybe even walked before, or, you know, or walking in a different uh, it, it, reality almost where we've tapped into that. Um, <laughs> wild, but powerful. If you believe that, now you can create the path in your own mind and then walk that towards the goals and towards the dream life that you envision. And part of that is, you know, so we talk about action, but sometimes people struggle maybe to visualize the actions that they need to take or want to take. And because really? they don't practice. Well, yeah, that's absolutely true. You know, practicing, if you can't expect to be good at something, if you've never practiced it, and you can't expect to be consistently good at something, if you don't practice it. Well, what's, what's amazing is that so many people do, <laughs> right? <laughs> they, right. They do, they do expect themselves to be great at it without practicing. And then they do something and it's not perfect the way it is in their mind. And then they think they're a failure. So they stop and they just have a total misunderstanding. A lot of that really comes from education and you know studying things that you're really not interested in anyway, and then getting a shitty grade because you're not interested in it and then feeling like a failure. So you just got to displace those experiences by you know taking up some new hobbies, things that you really want to do, re, um, reactivate your natural learning abilities as this insanely curious, infinite soul that's poking around in this physical reality for the purpose of having fun. And next thing you know, you're back at genius level. It it doesn't take very long. One of the things we talk about is the 80-20 rule where 20% of the actions we do take lead to 80% of our results. The key is just knowing which action. So 
specifically with um you know achieving your goals and creating that that dream life what do you think are some of the most powerful actions we can take uh well first of all the the um recognize that the that the moment that you're living in is actually your dream come true from last week um last month last year absolutely and sometimes sometimes that dream wasn't exactly what we thought it was going to be but it is our reality Corey, that's exactly what i was going to say um we use the word dream as like this ultimate ideal um but hey man you know sometimes people have bad dreams too but so whatever you were thinking and and expecting last week and last month and it really doesn't take longer than that i mean it only takes about you've got about 30 days of rolling um manifestational output you know if you start shifting your thoughts and feelings then literally 30 days from now you're going to have a completely new internal reality and you'll all you'll be well on your way to seeing abundant evidence of things shifting in your physical reality as well so time is the least important factor here uh so so getting into this this dream life just recognize you're already living a dream life you know, what you're what you're living right now is the perfect perfect balanced harmonious sum total of your previous thoughts uh, feelings and expectations and so the way to have a new future is to create a new past how do you create a new past do something radically different today so that by the time you go to sleep tonight you're looking back going holy fuck did that actually happen wow now you have a new past powerful jesse this has been uh just an incredible conversation i agree with you 100 percent on being able to create the reality and dream life that we want um and you know you are living proof of it um and also too i just appreciate the the insights the the analogies and and just the wisdom um couldn't thank you enough for coming on here wanted to ask where can we find you online uh, well, I, I appreciate all those words, Corey. It's it's really been a pleasure, uh, and in any any opportunity to just vibe uh, in this level. I mean, this is for me. These are these are the only conversations that I have. They're fun. They're light, and I really appreciate you uh, co creating this. This is a real really cool collaboration. Thanks, man. Uh, same here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. On, online, there's uh, it's really easy. I mean, I'm on Facebook. Uh, go to Jesse Elder. We've got a, a fan brand page. I hate fan page, and I'm not a fucking rock star. But um, <laughs> Jesse Elder is is uh, is on Facebook, uh, or go to Jesse Elder Live on Instagram. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. Uh, same thing, Jesse Elder. You can look up the Mind Vitamins. There's uh, we've got dozens and dozens of, of uh, con- uh, pieces of content there for free. Uh, JesseElder.com is a good place to go for up to date new challenges, trainings, etc. Um, and, and, and something that I, that I, I feel compelled to, uh, to, to leave everybody with, you know, we, we tend to glorify manifestation, creation, or let's just call it goal setting as a, as a skill. Like we have to get better at creating, but here's the reality. We, we don't get better at creating. You, you're already, everybody listening to this, me, Corey, you, everybody that's listening to this podcast right now is already masterfully creating everything that's happening in life. So that may sound like terrible news for somebody that's not living the reality they want to live. Mm -hmm. My challenge is to take total responsibility for the choices that you've made that have led to feeling this way. Maybe you can't change the immediate reality, at least right away, but you can change the way you feel because that's always under your control. And so we don't get better at creating. We're already as good as we're going to get. We just, most of us create unconsciously. And so it's like, you know, you say, I want blue. I want blue. I love blue. I want blue. And then you turn right back around and practice the thing you've been saying, which is, you know, there's a bunch of yellow. There's a bunch of yellow, Uh, just yellow everywhere. That's creating also. And then you get home and you go, why do I live in a green house? Why, why are all my clothes green? I, I didn't ask for green. Actually, you did. Because focusing on blue, focusing on yellow gives you green. Every human being is living the perfect sum total of their previous manifestational output, their previous thoughts and feelings. So if you want to have a new tomorrow, 
create a new today. And it, it really is, uh, doesn't need to be more complex than that. Yeah. Simplify it. I, I absolutely, you know, I, I kind of, I started, we, we talked about one degree at a time, you know, and I started with kind of closing the loop of this entire interview choice, the power of choice and to be able to choose how we feel, what we do. Um, and then just kind of adjusting that one degree or night, 1% is what I usually talk about. And, you know, over, a month, three months, six months, a year, you won't even recognize yourself. Um, and that's really like kind of the basis for change. A little bit every day creates a new reality. Um, yeah. Jesse, absolutely love this conversation. As always, we the last question is just, you know, you've achieved all this success and really living uh, just a really inspiring life. So thank you for that. Um, but what is your next level of success? Uh, next level of success is lunch. <laughs> of course you would say that. I love seriously, it. Seriously. Seriously. That's the, the thing, the thing in my life that I'm most looking forward to. <laughs> what do you know what you're going to have for lunch or is it just no, no fucking clue. Didn't visualize no, that I, one, huh? No, no idea. <laughs> I just trust myself to make a good choice. <laughs> uh, as the day continues, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to put in, um, hopefully another four to 500 mistakes on guitar so I can make progress towards this song that I'm learning. Um, connect with the team a little bit, uh, maybe go out and get social tonight. Uh, we're in the middle of the 21 day challenge. So our next video is on Sunday. So just feeling into that, pre-paving that a little bit. I've got a coaching group that I'm working with online called Amplifiers of Abundance, where we have been for the last two months diving deep into these concepts and making exercises out of them. And people are aggressively testing their own reality and, and kind of blowing themselves away. So I've got that class uh, coming up. That's As far as I'm concerned, that's success. And I'm uh, quite content to let the universe continue to surprise and delight me because it seems to be doing a good job so far. Incredible answer. Definitely a first for this podcast, but absolutely in line with everything you've said. Um, just how, you know, living one day at a time and um, being so present in everything. Uh, I, I, what can I say? It's the only thing that, it's the only thing that's real, man. Inspiring though. You know, it's especially for people who are always still worried about the future or worried about the past. It's the only the, thing the, that's you're real. right, man. You, you just nailed it. I know we need to wrap it, but you can only worry about the future, uh, in one place and that's now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, that's, uh, people are free to do that. That's totally cool. Jesse, thank you so much for coming on Unleash Success. My pleasure, Corey. Next time you're in Austin, hit us up. Cheers, brother. If you enjoyed the show and learned something of value, the one ask that I have is please go subscribe, whether you're on iTunes, Spotify, or YouTube. And if you leave us a five-star rating or review, that absolutely helps us get our message out there. Each week, I'm gonna to continue to interview amazing people, and we're gonna break down their tools and strategies to help get you real results. Feel free to visit the website, unleashsuccess.com, and subscribe to our newsletter so you can get updates each week. And remember, knowing is not enough. Knowledge alone is not power. Action is. Because action is the only way you're going to get the results you want in life and truly live the life of your dreams. So take some action, subscribe to the podcast today, and get ready to unleash success in you.